Hey, you guys. Okay, so um, welcome to my department store counter. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I wanted to do a video where I talk about perfumes, all my perfumes that I have, in a way that I think is going to be helpful, hopefully interesting, but like to break them down kind of by like types, categories, like ones that I really like. Let me shut this because it's a little echoey. I hope this is all right and you can see it okay. But everyone is um, good after this eventful week. Um, if you guys have not listened to our podcast episode on the Vanderpump Rules drama, it's unlike anything. I, I don't want to say that, okay? I'm not trying to promote the podcast. I don't care. Listen if you want. But if you're into that, it's it's stuff that um, I think we did it. And I, I don't want to say like the best way I've heard yet, but like very coherent. Digging into the past. I believe personally it's been going on for far more than like seven or eight months. I think it's back to like the James days. Again, I don't know. Watch those old, ep I mean, uh, watch the old episodes and tell me differently. We talked about stuff that, honestly, I that I haven't heard anyone talk about. From things in these first four episodes of the season or five or whatever episodes that's been out. To things that were very telling that happened in the last reunion. To just the James and Raquel of it all and what was going on then. The clues, you know. I know, we're breaking. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I feel like, it, I feel fully insane. I know, I know, Tiffany. It doesn't matter. It's done. It's just so fascinating, and um, I think if you were <laughs> on the fence about getting our podcast, if you like that topic, I mean, it's just it's it's if you're interested in that topic, I think you should um give it a, give it a whirl, a real, okay? So, I brought in all my perfumes. I thought this would be like kind of the best way or the best place to like show everything. I have a lot of perfumes, okay? Now, when I thought, like, I'm going to bring them all in here, I kind of thought, okay, I'm going to have to dumb it down a little, okay? Not dumb it down, but I'm going to have to, like, narrow this down, just get, like, the best ones. And usually when you see a perfume collection or you see someone do a perfume video, they're not showing, like, all the little, like, you know, old shameful ones or even their entire shameful collection. And I thought it was going to look much more shameful than it is. It's really fine. And I want to share with you guys before we get started, before we break this down, because I do have them kind of in like different sections. And then I'm going to tell you the ones that suck and the ones that are worth it, okay? Um, I think, and ever since I've been a kid, I think back to like just, uh, it sounds so silly, but just like the magic of like, I don't know, like watching my mom get ready, my grandma, like scent obviously plays such a good such a big role. My older sister, oh my gosh, she wore that Liz Claiborne. Do you guys remember in the triangle? That's like the scent of like my childhood and everything cool. Like is that scent, right? Um, my mom, you know, like wearing, I think she wore like private collection and beautiful a lot. Now she wears angel a lot. My grandma all those years wore so many different good perfumes and just things that you associate with people. And I've definitely got some signature scents, but I'm the type, like, I like a signature scent, okay? I have a few that I wear often, but then I like to have all these different ones to sprinkle in here and there. But I guess, like, as I kind of grew up, and I remember, like, in my bedroom, as I was growing up, you know, I had this little tray that had, like, you know, little perfumes that I'd collected. And my grandma had this little shelf in her bathroom that had little perfume minis, which I've totally copied and done that myself. And I'll show you guys that in a minute. But... I just think it's such a fun collection. It's beautiful. It's something that no matter your skill, no matter what you look like, your people say like sizes, shit, whatever. I mean, whatever your skin tone is, whatever might work or might not work. Perfumes are just a fun, fun <laughs> thing to collect and a fun beauty item to be into. Um, I have so many that when I go out, I get so many compliments, others not so much. What is it with that? I don't know. We'll talk about that. Um, but before we get started quickly, I want to show you, because I obviously brought them in here, and I do not keep my perfumes where I keep my clothes. And that's different for everybody. When I get dressed, I like to come in here, I get my clothes, I get dressed, whatever, but then I usually then go do my makeup and everything, and I like to put my perfume on, like, there. I like to keep my perfume in a almost like a bathroom situation. Some people don't like to do that because of, you know, oh, the sunlight, the humidity, the this, that. I've never had a problem with that. We have, like, two sky, like, tons of light in our bathroom. I've never had an issue with that. A lot of them are stored kind of, I'll show you where I keep them, but close enough to all that. It's never been a problem. Um, but just do what you want to do. Have it, have it exactly where you want, you know, yours to be. 
Um, I do like to display them as beautiful pieces of decor. The ones that I use every day, obviously, I keep close by. But, like, in our powder room, I have, you know, I keep a little bottle of Chanel that, like, you know, someone can use or I can use when I'm down there. In a guest bathroom, you know, I might keep a scent that I'm not reaching for every day, but that's kind of a unisex scent or something nice or something you can just spray in the air. By my bedside table, I keep this bottle of um, Byredo Blanche because I like to spray the sheets with it. Like, it's just, you know, and in here I have a few bottles. I just, um... I'll kind of take you through, let me show you that quickly, and then we'll um, get into breaking them down. Okay, so in our bathroom, my sink, all my stuff's over here, Brad's is over there, my side's very messy right now, um, so I get ready and stuff, you guys have seen that. And then in here is our closet, Brad still has his half over here, the big half, um, and then when we built my closet, I turned this into like a beauty closet of sorts. You guys have seen this, we've done that. This has been like this for many, many years. It was kind of odd when I first did it. I thought, is this excessive? Is this too much? I don't think so. Like, I, I really love it. And I've got a mix of perfumes and beauty products all kind of mixed up over there. I've got a hang that mirror. That's just kind of like a little fun spot over there. A lot of little containers where I keep my extra makeup. Um, I have like a makeup drawer where I get ready. It has like my main stuff in it. Um, extras over here, tools. You know, all kinds of goodies. I have this little spot here where I get ready, like I've shown that and everything. I had to like literally put my laundry here because I had it piled up in the other room. Um, and sometimes like I'll have, you know, perfume or two sitting here, but I really just like to keep them all in one place. Over here, like by our tub, I have these little shelves. And um, this is just kind of a little fun spot that I put like minis and things that I may not actually use, but I just think it's really pretty. It reminds me, my grandma had kind of a little similar thing like this in her bathroom when I was growing up. It reminds me to take this with me. This is just so pretty. I just like to set it out and I use that often. It's just a nice clean scent, but we'll talk about that. Some of you will notice when I do videos in my room or when you see this in the background that I have a little um, perfume on my nightstand. I just think this is such a nice clean scent. It's almost like a room spray. Like I use perfumes, obviously, and use them however you want, but I just think they're beautiful sitting here and there, and I'm going to show you how I decorate. with Not decorate, but like, I mean, you know, it's pretty, but they're actually useful. You know, like sometimes sit them around in different places so that you don't forget to use them. So a long time ago, I bought this cabinet. I hope they still have it at Target. I love these. These are also the ones that I put three of the smaller ones together to create my big dining room table, like sideboard thing, which they actually sell a one that's actually made all together like that. Now, okay, whatever. So another good idea, of course, I've got like this cute little cabinet in here because there's no storage in this bathroom otherwise. And it's just pretty for decor and stuff, but like room spray and stuff. But then also like have like a little, you know, have some perfume or like someone can, um, someone can use it if they want to, you know, and it's just pretty like you can spray it when you're downstairs or you know what I'm saying. Okay, whatever. So I'll take this one with me too. Our basement bathroom, I forgot to have one more. So it. I like this one because it's just, it matches. And I just thought it was kind of pretty. It looked a little like, I don't know, kind of with the vibe of the bathroom, but it's a unisex scent. So we'll take this one and talk about that one too. In Olivia's room, I recently made this little spot like where she could get ready in the morning. It's really cute. But in her closet, I have a little tray with her perfumes. These are mine. Okay, don't be alarmed. These are very, very nice. Um, this House of Siage has sent me some beautiful scents over the years. And this is my favorite, the Hope Bijou. And I also really love the Mickey Mouse. But when I got this, Olivia obviously wanted it in her room. That's fine. She started using it every now and then. It's a really nice soft scent that's kind of coconutty. I don't know if they still have this. But I kind of started just putting these on her little tray because they're cute. And then, I don't know if you guys know about this, the Bath & Body Works, if you get the app, pretty much, I mean, almost like every time you make a purchase. I don't even know like how they work it or whatever. If you're buying candles a lot or whatever, like you'll always have a thing where you get something for $16.50 for free. So every time we go, Livy literally like gets a free spray, which is kind of cool. So that is that. And these are so beautiful. A lot of these are limited edition. I believe these two scents they have all the time. And this one's very like fresh and clean. Like at first I thought it was like a little too serious or a little too 
kind of like that Chanel vibe where like sometimes it's a little too sharp, but I really actually like it. It dries down to like a very like soft, feminine, beautiful scent, but it's very sophisticated, but fresh. Kind of almost has like a green hint to it. Like this one's very good. I think that it smells like grapefruit. This is probably my favorite one, the Hopi Ju, and I love it for the summertime. And then in my closet, I think it's beautiful. I mean, perfume bottles are just so gorgeous anyways. This is, that goes in that box, but this was my grandma's. Um, my grandfather sent this to her from Germany, probably like in the 60s, I guess I would say. Um, 50s? 50s. I guess it would be in the 50s, yeah. Um, and then this is nice. This is not a perfume that I would wear all the time. Obviously, I've had it for years, and you can see, like, I haven't used much of it at all. It's a nice, fresh scent. I say this is more like a nice room spray, and I keep this in here because it's just beautiful, but it's a nice, like, scent to kind of spray around. Okay, um, first of all, my signature scents, the ones that I love, love, love the most. My very first one, and this is one of those that I can't be without. I don't ever wear it much, but this is, like, the scent of my, like, late high school, college days, um... I just, I've had this bottle forever. I probably went through so many of these, but when Brad and I first started dating, this was kind of the scent I would wear, and he would always say, like, his car would smell like this, like, when, you know, 20 years ago plus. You guys know Ralph, okay? If you guys graduated anywhere in, like, around the 2000 era, you know about that, okay? Um, okay, so that's kind of just one that I need to... This is always in the middle of my table here in my closet and I just keep like joy this is such a beautiful dish um I'll link to this because for a while they didn't have it but I always get questions about this dish and um not like from but like when people come over they're like oh that's so pretty okay so many of you guys have been asking about this dish okay so let's do it okay and I do have a few new ones too uh okay next would be the Gucci 2 now the Gucci 2 and I'm going to categorize these scents and stuff, but we'll get into it. This Gucci 2, I wore this on my wedding day. I kind of wore this during the days Brad and I were, like, dating, getting engaged. This kind of became, like, my, after high school call, I was like, okay, I need to, like, I need to, you know, get a little more sophisticated. This was, like, my first perfume that, like, I repurchased again and again that I wore every day. And so nostalgic. And Brad loves this. He gave me a bottle of this, um... I think it was like around our wedding and you know I had worn it before that but that was kind of like a nice gift and I still have the box and the bottle that he gave me um, for our, on our wedding around our wedding and I just love it and um, it can't you can't find it anymore Gucci too Gucci get your act together okay you got so many scents that are honestly not that great like get this one back okay everybody loves it um, the world would go crazy I don't know how to describe this set it's kind of like um, it's floral but I don't like it's floral. I'll get into my scent preferences and stuff in a second. And I don't want to just look up. You guys know how I am with describing things. But I'm going to do it in a real honest way. And not like, this has notes of vetiver and lang lang. And, you know, has an oaky, woodsy finish. Like, no. It's kind of like wine. Like, it tastes like dirt. Or it's gross. Or it's good. Or it's bitter. Or it's sweet. Or it's sour. I'm just going to describe things in just a basic, basic way. <laughs> but that I think is more, like, realistic. So it is a very sophisticated scent. It smells very expensive, but it's also very, like, a little floral, but soft, okay? It's not going to be as floral and as fruity and, like, or as young as, like, a Miss Dior or something, like, Blooming Bouquet. This is more, like, um, sexy. It has, like, kind of a, like, a cedary scent to it, like a woodsy. It's, it's very, very good and unique and, um such a shame and this is the thing too I have perfumes that are literally clones of other perfumes because you got to think there's so many things out there and it's honestly very rare to find something that is unique because these brands a lot of times if a scent's popular you'll notice a lot of brand doing like around the same scent um or obviously there's only so many like I mean there's tons but like notes like certain notes of perfumes like you're gonna pick up certain things and certain ones that smell similar even if they're not like a direct copy this is so unique, and I have never found anything remotely similar. You can't get it, so I'm so glad that I opened with that one. Um, then, I'm just kind of taking you through, like, what my signature ones were. Then the Misty or Blooming Bouquet. To this day, I mean, again, repurchased it so many times. To this day, I still feel like this is one that I would pick up and use, and I just always feel sexy when I use this. I don't like the original Misty Or. It has to be the one that says Misty or Blooming Bouquet. It's a very sexy floral. 
A lot of florals, if they're too florally or they're too sharp, give me a headache. This one is like just so beautiful, so sexy, such like, it's just such a good scent. So I really do love that one. And then I started wearing this one a lot, which is the Delina Exclusive. This is amazing. I have another one. Um, there is someone that I made friends with like at a restaurant that I we would go to all the time and she would just always say, oh my gosh, she smells so good, you smell so good. And finally, I just, like, brought her a bottle of it because, like, and every time I go, I can smell it on her. You know, what? It's, it's just so, it's like, this is one of those that I noticed for the first time I would get so many compliments. If I ever wear this, I'll be, like, at a drive through and people will be like, oh, my gosh, she smells so good. It has, like, a yummy sweetness to it, okay? It has, like, powdery, a little rosy, but then also, like, vanilla. A little, just a very yummy, beautiful, just the most delicious scent. Now, they have the original Delina. That's not the one you want. It's okay. I have it. I have, like, one of the little, like, vials of it, like, in the little spray, like, the coffer set or whatever it's called that I got. Um, so I've tried that one, and I like it. And if I hadn't tried this one, I would have loved that one. This one is so much better. And um, I'm almost out of this one. I do have a fresh bottle of this one. Um, but this is amazing. A little expensive, but it will last. This probably has the best staying power of any of my perfumes that I own. Okay, and then finally, um, and then we'll go through all these, but I'm just talking about like ones that are kind of my signature, the Baccarat Rouge 540. This definitely has had a moment over the last couple years. Um, I was at McDonald's the other day, and a woman was like, oh, the woman working was like, oh my gosh, you smell so good. And I was like, thank you. And usually I'll say like, oh, it's this, it's that. And um, she was just kind of busy, and then she was like, is it the Baccarat? And I was like, yeah. And people can like, it's just a very, I don't want to say basic scent now, but it kind of has become that because I feel so many people wear it. And it is such a unique scent. And again, we've talked about this. I've owned both the Extract, which is the one that's in the red bottle. This is the Eau de Parfum, which is honestly already so good, but people are like, oh, the extract's the one you want. The Eau de Parfum, anytime you can get like a one that says Eau de Parfum or whatever, that's what you want rather than an Eau de Toilette because it has less alcohol. Eau de Toilettes have more alcohol, so they kind of evaporate faster. A lot of mine are that, and it's fine, but the Eau de Parfum always lasts longer. The extract version of this um, is sharper. It's more, um, it's more bitter and sour. This one's more sweet. And I know I sound like I'm bashing it. It's because I am. I really don't like that one. I've, I've got this is probably my fourth bottle of this. I started wearing this just before COVID. I think I bought it late 2019. So I wore it all through COVID around the house everywhere. And for a while, it just reminded me of like COVID days. For a while, I was like, Ugh, don't use that. But now I'm totally back into it. There's so many different types of scents. Um, I feel like, like I said, some that are hard to classify. The Byredo scents are very difficult to classify. However, you know, people say, oh, they're very unique. I find that the Byredo scents honestly mirror, um, a lot of other, like, more like department store, like, basic scents more than most things. The Wool Floor, this is very, like, has, like, um, very floral, okay? Very, like, fresh floor, like, lily. This is, is good, but it's, it's just right on the cusp of being too much floral for me. But I like it, and it has like a like kind of a powdery, like soft finish. So the low floor is very good and very floral. Mojave Ghost. If Mar Mojave Ghost is Marc Jacobs Daisy. I've had that. I mean, you guys know, there's so many perfumes we've had over the years, but um, the Mojave Ghost is Marc, Jacob Marc Jacobs Daisy. I love this perfume. This was the first Byredo perfume I got, and I believe I've had two bottles of it. So I really do like it. I haven't worn it in a while. Um, but I was really into this for a while. It's floral that you can't put your finger on exactly what type of floral it is. It doesn't smell too lily or too rose. It does have like a hint of floral, but it's very like powdery and has kind of that like a little bit of like a soapiness to it too. Gypsy Water. I feel like this is so overly hyped. This is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, okay? If you smell Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue, that has kind of that lemony finish, which I am not a citrusy perfume girl. With the exception of the um, the Hope Bijou that I told you guys about. I will link to that one. That's the House of Siage. That one's like grapefruity and really delicious. And then I have a floral over here, or a um, citrusy one over here that we'll talk about in a second. But it's because it's layered with so many other things. But I don't like something that's like, oh, you smell like a big lemon, or oh, that smells like tangerine. I like things that have like a lot of different layers that aren't like, oh, you, can, you can't really put your finger on what exactly that is. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, 
This one's fine. It's fresh. And again, I think I may have had two bottles. No, I don't, I don't remember. It, it's been a long time since I started buying these. So I don't quite remember. But um, I know I've repurchased the Mojave Ghost. And I have repurchased the Blanche. Which we'll talk about the Blanche in a second. Which I think is the best one. One of the best ones. The Gypsy Water is a little sour on the skin for me. It smells very lemony. And then it disappears in about... 20 minutes. So I'm not really sure of like the hype behind this other than that it's in a cute bottle. It's very like aesthetically pleasing and it's called Gypsy Water and it had a moment online and so lots of people bought it. Now it's a good scent. I'm not saying it's bad. Is it one that you're going to like get tons of compliments on or that people will even smell at all? Maybe not. I don't know. But it's one of those that I think I spray on just like in the summertime when I want something light or just like to smell clean. The 11th hour, I don't know why I bought this. I'm thinking, did I smell this at the counter or did I order this? Why would I order this if I didn't know? It smells like a hamster cage, tons of cedar and cinnamon. It's just not something I want to smell like. <laughs> I have it and great. Like I said, this one has a hint of cedar, but it doesn't smell like wood chips. Velvet Haze. Okay, between, uh, Blanche is my fave fave, okay? But between all the other ones, I would say Lil Floor, which is very, very fresh floral. But Velvet Haze is very sexy, and it smells exactly like a lush candy, what's it called, candy cream? What was the candy bath bomb or the bubble bar? This is very lush adjacent. If you guys, um, I want to say remember, because I'm, I'm sure lush is still around. I think, I haven't seen a lush well, I haven't been to a mall in God knows how long either, but um, last time I checked, like, a lot of them disappeared from malls. I'm pretty sure they still have a website. Maybe they're doing better than ever. I don't know. I just, I was on, you all know we were on one about all the Lush stuff years ago. Um, I just haven't really been into that, or I haven't really checked that out. Okay, Velvet Haze is good, okay? It's kind of like a, um, it's sexy. It has kind of like a, I don't want to say musky, but... It's like sexy and fresh. It's kind of like what 11th hour is like trying to be. It's a little cedary, a little like um, creamy, a little powdery, tiny bit of floral. Again, you guys, how else am I supposed to explain? Like, I'm not, I mean, come on. It, I'm just telling you it's good or it's not. Um, um, and then Blanche. Let's talk about Blanche and then we'll move into the different types because I've got Blanche over here. I couldn't really classify these by Rado ones, so I just kind of put them out front. So let's talk about like different kind of scents that are like clean scents. So the Blanche is the only Byredo scent that I own in like a larger bottle because I had it in the smaller bottle and I went through it so fast. I love this. It's the perfect scent to spray on like when you get out of the shower you just want to feel clean. Um, there's not a lot of like layers to it. It smells soapy, a little fresh, a little like detergent adjacent. Again, I keep this one by my bed just because it's so pretty. I like the decor of it all. But it's just the perfect one to just spray on real quick whenever. You could spray it on before bed. You could spray it on in the morning. You could spray it on after a shower. You could spray it on your sheets. I just absolutely love it, and it smells so clean and beautiful. Another more clean scent for Inigo, as we, as we do. Let's just start working through. The Jo Malone Silk Blossom. I believe this was limited edition, but I really hope that you can get your hands on it. It's so nice. Um, I think it's beautiful. This is very similar to Blanche, but it has a little bit more, um, just tiny hint of floral, but you wouldn't smell someone coming and be like, whoa, that's too florally. It's just kind of like one of those, like you can't really determine what it is. It's just fresh, it's soft, it's not going to be overbearing. This is such a good one. Another one that's good is the Way Melrose Place. This one is also a very kind of like fresh, clean scent. If you're familiar with the Way hair products, that's kind of what this smells like, so it does smell like shampoo to me. Jo Malone, Wood Sage and Sea Salt, so many great Jo Malone scents. Again, I love the Silk Blossom, but Wood Sage and Sea Salt is just one of those that is classic. I've had a few bottles of this over the years, and it's just you can't go wrong. It just smells like you're fresh, you're clean, you've gotten ready. Yay. Salt, okay? This one I got just because I'm like, ooh, salt. I fully ordered this without smelling it. It doesn't smell like amazing or anything, but it smells, it sounds bad, but it's, it's a clean, soft, almost a hint of like a papaya, you know what I mean? A little papaya, a little like powder. Um, I hate that I said it didn't smell amazing. I don't mean that. None of these are like, wow, this totally knocks my socks off. I mean, some of them do. You know what I'm saying? It's a good scent. Um, it doesn't smell like salt. <laughs> 
but it's really good and fresh. Okay. Now this is new. Okay. This is probably the newest one I have. I got the Glossier U. Is that how you pronounce it? Glossier? Now for years, I've marveled over this scent and said nothing else smells like this. It's the Replica Lipstick On. Now, this one has gotten kind of hard to find, and it's called Lipstick On, and the fragrance description is Night Blush and Rice Powder. It smells like old, but like nostalgic, like compact makeup, lipstick, Dr. Pepper. Okay, I know that's odd, but once you, like a Dr. Pepper lip smackers, you'll never unsmell that, or you'll never un associate that you know it smells like a dr pepper lip smackers okay so i ordered this from sephora because they just recently started selling the glossier products and um i didn't really see any makeup that was like knocking my socks off by glossier i mean i'm sure it's all good but it was like nothing that i was like i'm dying to try um but i saw this and i was like i'm really curious about this and lo and behold it smells just like this now i do still feel if you want this type of scent lipstick on is better i think it's a little stronger so if you're gonna wear it like a perfume like out and about whatever you want something to like really smell strong the lipstick on is your best bet the U is a very soft scent it smells exactly like lipstick on the whole doc dr pepper lip smackers vibe but what i like to do with this one i love to spray this on before bed now i've never had a perfume that i'm like let me spray this on before bed like i put on take a shower every night i put on lotion but I'm not like putting on perfume. This is so nice and so yummy. And it does smell like clean without being like too jarring before bedtime. Like I wouldn't be spraying on this like Byredo Blanche. This is more of like a morning, like let me smell fresh and energized kind of scent. I don't know. You know what I mean? This is more like a clean smell that like you could put on at night. Okay. So that's a good one. So I just thought that was so odd because when I smelled it, I was like, oh my gosh, it's exactly like the lipstick on. Okay, so we have some more. This is probably my favorite. I mean, I like Chanel Chance. That was always like, I mean, I don't have one currently, but I used to wear that for years and I love that one. But the number five, the Chanel number five low, like the L-E-A-U, I think is so good and it's the same vibe and scent as the original number five without being so strong and sharp. You know, you can pick up a hint of like freshness to this one. It's just a little lighter than the number five and it's a little more like fresh. So I really love that one. I do have the worst Chanel. I think people say this is the worst Chanel scent of all time and I kind of like it, but we'll talk about that. This is just a big fat like, okay, the Prada candy. I've had the original Prada candy. This is not the original candy. This is is this the original candy or is this a different one? They make so many versions of this stuff. I don't even know. I used to really like that pink sugar that just smelled like, you know, sugar, like just sweet. And I kind of sometimes feel like that's what this reminds me of. But I don't know if it's gotten worse or what, but this is just kind of like meh. I don't know. It's just not my favorite, but I think the bottle is really cute. It's okay. okay. Let's talk about the scents that are a little more like summery, beachy, a little citrusy, a little coconutty. You know those scents, okay? The ones that have that very specific vibe. This is amazing, okay? This one's called Room Service by um, this Wilhelm, 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 Wilhelm Perfumery. And these are expensive. They're very good. They last a long time. There's one that's called like Mango Skin. There's a lot of different ones that are kind of, I feel like, in the Byredo vein of like being unique or a little odd. And I like that, okay? I like an odd scent. It has a little bit of a citrusy hint to it, okay? I would say more like a, like a nectarine, a tad bit of a tangerine, but it also has like some floral to it and it has like kind of an expensive, like, I don't say finish, but like you know, you smell these perfumes that are too, like even just the Byredo, the Gypsy Water, right? It's very lemony. It doesn't have that like layer that makes it smell expensive. I hate to say that, or I, I don't know what, not that you want to smell expensive. I've just, it's just certain things that have that layer to it. This has that extra yummy layer without smelling sharp. And I just really love it. I'm gonna smell like a little bit of everything. But this is kind of like one of those that could lean into like a signature scent, you know, like wearing it all the time. But when I got it, it was something that I just kind of sprayed here and there, like in the summertime, like for special times. And I always feel really like good when I wear it. 
Oh my gosh, this is so good. I got this one not that long ago. It's the vacation, you know, you know, like the sunscreen and that whole brand is really cute. They do have really good sunscreens. Um, but I caved and I ended up getting this and I don't want to say I wish I didn't because I think it's good. It smells like the scent that I used to get from Victoria's Secret that was in, I believe, like a golden bottle and it was called like bronze bombshell or something. That's what this smells like. It says it smells like pool water, sunscreen, swimsuits. Okay, all the things. Odd, right? But um, just a very like coconutty, suntan oil, a little bit fresh, a little coconutty. It's cute. I like it. It's a good scent. But it smells just like the Tom Ford Soleil Blanc. Um, this one's a little, I mean, obviously this one has a, like I said, a nicer layer. It has that extra something kind of smells a little like this. So maybe like the Soleil Blanc is like room service and vacation mixed together. Cause again, I like the vacation scent, but again, it's too specific for me. If I wear this and I go out, it smells like I've just rolled around in Hawaiian tropic or, which is not a bad scent, nothing better. Or like, okay, she just like went to the beach and didn't shower in a good way, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I do like that. But um, the Soleil Blanc is something that I don't really, I think, appreciate as much as I should. This is a good one. Oh, this is a good one. It has that same vibe, the same exact vibe as Vacation, but expensive. More, more like I'd say like layered and nicer. But what I'm saying expensive, I just mean like layered, okay? Um, that, and then this is an Hermes perfume. The only Hermes perfume that I own that is so hard to find. I got this at the store in Atlanta probably 10 years ago. I don't even know. It's been a long time. This is an old, old perfume. Maybe it wasn't that long ago. Maybe it was like seven, eight years ago. But you can't find it. It's the, um, okay, it's the Jordi Hermes Gardenia. They have the Jordi Hermes, but sometimes they do like in different, you know, their iterations or they just have the original. The one that says Gardenia is usually hard to find. Now, I love a scent that incorporates gardenia i'd say a good 15 years ago 20 it kind of went a little nuts with the whole michael kors you guys know that scent okay it's burned in our brains and it inspired like so many other scents this doesn't have that this while it says gardenia smells just like sunscreen this is a summery like ooh, sunscreen scent the smells a little sharp, so I think it's gone bad. No, but but it kind of has that vibe. Okay, I don't know. You can't even get it. while I'm talking about it. Well, it's just I'm talking about um, my collection. Okay, the KKW Body Two. This is, I believe, the only Kim scent that I have. I used to have one of those in the little jars, and I gave one away. Um, this smells exactly like the Hermes Jordi Hermes Gardenia. So I think this is kind of a good dupe for that, and I think the bottle is really cute. Um, but it's just a, you know, basic one. I don't know. I, I don't, like I said, I don't really have her perfumes, but I just thought the bottle was cute. And then it was kind of a pleasant surprise. It smelled like that. So I've had that one a while. That's a good one. All right, let's get into some different. Okay. So just a few left. I cannot believe that we've made it this far. Okay. Let's get into some weird, weird, weird perfumes. Okay. These are really weird. We'll get into those last. Let's go ahead and finish this up. This is so good. The Moschino Toy is it toy two? Yeah, this is so good. Brad even has, I believe the one that's the black bear. That's like the toy for mint. It smells so good. The toy two is very good. And of course, like the bottle is so cute. It's a little bear. This is just one of those like best friend perfumes that isn't super descript. Can wear it with anything. It's very fresh. It has like a little bit of like a light, almost a little apple-y. Um, this is a little like fresh. I would say it's kind of like the Byredo Blanche, but like with a little bit of like apple mixed into it which is kind of odd, but very fresh and, um, but then like sexy at the same time. You, know, you guys know, you put on certain perfumes and it just makes you feel on or it, feel, it makes you feel different. That's why like if I put on a perfume that smells like lemons, I don't feel sexy in that. Like I want to feel, do you know what I'm saying? That I think maybe that's why, you know, I want something that's a little layered and mysterious. These Chanel scents, I've smelled them all at the counter. Then they came out with the one that's, this is the Paris Riviera. There's a Paris, like, Biarritz. There's a Paris, what's the other one? There's a bunch of other ones. And then this, the Paris Paris, I believe, is the newest one. So I own the Riviera and the Paris Paris. This is the one that I keep downstairs, like, in the little case, like, in our powder room, because I think it's just beautiful, but it's also a scent that, like, 
I could just spray on and layer with anything through the day, or someone could spray it on if they wanted to, someone else, you know? This is just, if you're familiar with the Chanel number no. 5, like I said, Chanel perfumes have that, they all kind of have that same thread that kind of runs through all of them, even though they're all different. These all have that, but I think the Riviera is my favorite. It has that kind of like, sophisticated scent of Chanel, but it also like has a little bit of like light freshness to it too. This is very similar, I believe, to Chanel number no. five, but it's a little more like feminine and softer. It's just, it's it's good. It has a tiny hint of maybe a little bit of citrus to it. It's like Chanel number no. five, a little more powdery, a little more citrus. And then the Paris, Paris smells so similar. I think this one's a little um, stronger, slightly more floral. But again, they all have that kind of like Chanel um, vibe, which I think is good. And a lot of people turn their noses up to like, oh, Chanel number no. five smells too old, or these have that whole like Chanel vibe. But when you put them on, it just, I feel like nothing makes you feel more like put together and like classic. And I don't know, you can just always kind of tell the Chanel number no. five. Like you don't necessarily like smell it and be like, oh, this is the best thing ever. And neither with any of like these other Chanel's. But the key with the Chanel scents is that when you wear them, that's like where they kind of unfold. And like that's where they really smell good is like when they mix with your skin. This has been kind of talked about as being like the nastiest Chanel scent of all time. I happen to really like it. It's the Chanel number no. 19. This is not going to be for everyone. It has the same vibe. <laughs> I keep saying that. What the heck is that? I don't know. That same like Chanel kind of like sharp, classic, old scent. You know what I'm saying? But then this one has like a freshness to it. It's a little green. It's very powdery. This is probably the most powdery. And it smells almost like a fresh cut like green. Um, you know what I'm saying. Like that kind of like sharp green, like not grassy, but smell like that mixed with powder and whatever the heck, they, the Chanel. You know, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's odd. When you wear this, though, like spraying it on after a shower or spraying it on just like during the summer, like when you want something kind of light, as you go, it just makes you smell like fresh. And I, I just really like this one. It's odd, but it's good, okay? If you know, you know. It's just good. Okay, I talked about this a minute ago, the Gucci Bloom. This is a very, like, basic... Kind of like, you know, the Tube Rose Gardenia Heavy, like Michael Kors kind of vibe. If you know, you know. It's not bad. It's great. It's just something that we have smelled so much, and it's such a beautiful scent that it almost got, like, ruined because it was just too much of a good thing. Um, again, I just feel like Gucci has so many perfumes that are good, but you don't need ten different iterations of the Gucci Bloom. Have one or two, and bring back the dang Gucci, too. Just bring it back. Again, nothing better. The Gucci memoir, I have this down in like in the basement bathroom, like a guest kind of vibe. Because this is odd. This is probably one of the most odd scents I have. It is technically, you know, categorized as a unisex scent. Um, it's nothing I could ever put my finger on. It has like just this odd softness to it. It's not a perfume like the Chanel's that's sharp or that will hit you in the face. It is a scent. It smells Honestly, like, it doesn't even smell like any notes I've necessarily smelled in other scents. You know what I need? I need, like, little cards that I can spray and then, like, smell. I'll spray it on this. Now that we're at the end of the video, you guys. Um, it does smell like an old book. And I think that's what they said, like... It's supposed to be, like, reminiscent of, like, a memory and a, like, we know, okay, we know. You guys, nothing better than reading perfume descriptions, especially the Byredo ones, if you really want to, like, go on a ride and, like, just read about them. It's so funny. It's like, okay, here's the scent, okay? I'm just, I'm just being funny, okay? Velvet Haze, whatever, I don't know. I don't, I'm just making this up, okay? Um, don't come for me, but I'm just saying this is funny. You can read it yourself. Um, but like Velvet Haze, okay, like I kind of explained it, whatever, it's a little creamy, a little floral, whatever, it's got a hint of, let's just say, I don't know, a little bit of cedar, a little bit of that, whatever. And they'll say like, literally the most unhelpful descriptions ever. Velvet Haze, a memory, a time that's past, you know, waking up after a nap on a rainy afternoon, and then going 
to get ice cream. You know what I'm saying? And then the best day of your life. And it's like, yeah, give me that. Don't know what the hell it smells like, but I'll take it. You know, this one is really, this one is really, oh, I left this guy out. Okay. The Valentino, I believe this is Donna. Yeah. Valentino Donna. This is good. It's just, to me, I smell this and it is a good perfume. This is probably the most with this one, just basic ass perfume. You know what I'm saying? It's good, but it's like just nothing super special. That doesn't make it bad. It's, it's great. It's just, here's what it is. I think it smells like a lot of other things. It does have a little hint of whatever's in this, of the Dr. Pepper, the Dr. Pe the hint of Dr. Pepper, which honestly, just put that in the description and everyone will know what the, what, what you're talking about. You know what I mean? This has a hint of Dr. Pepper. I should have put this over with these. Now this makes me want to wear this. So it's like those, but a little more floral. And I love the bottle. This bottle's so pretty. This is a bottle that actually I should put in here. I think I'm going to start leaving this one in here. And that's the thing. Okay. Leave your perfumes. Not like, okay, not like my background. I'm not going to put like my background or this one or like something that I'm wearing super often or just grabbing for on the daily, like in a bath, in like a powder bathroom or in an extra room for decor. Like that's going to be where I'm going to use it. But like some of these beautiful perfumes that you have, sprinkle them around, you know, like set them in different bathrooms or different parts of your home. And you may think, well, I'm not going to use it. I tr trust me, like you'll, your eyes will be on it and you'll use it so much more. So if I have it in here, I'll probably just, you know, spray it here and there and enjoy it. Okay, back to the weirdness. Two more very odd perfumes. Um, the Lombre Dawn Slow by Diptyque. This is an odd scent. If you like the Bay Candle, that is what this kind of smells like, but a little sharper. It's like... Um, Roses, but like old roses, peppery, sharp, odd, okay? And it's a beautiful bottle. It's got like the swan on it. I really like this. This is another one that I should leave out somewhere because it is really pretty. Um, I might put this in the bathroom downstairs, but it's also another one that would make just like a good spray, just spray around kind of vibe. I'm not saying don't buy expensive perfumes just to sit around and never eat. Obviously, it's a collection. I'm not using all these every day. I like having them. Um, but I also do want to enjoy them and use them, you know, but whatever. Just enjoy your stuff. The got, That's what I'm saying. Like, put them in different places of your house. If it's a beautiful bottle, don't have it all jumbled up in a tray with a million other ones where you can't appreciate it. So that's really pretty, too, to have them all together. But, um, you know, just do some different stuff. Now, the overalls candles, I have, there. You, you guys have seen these candles. They're the ones that are you know, sometimes they're in pink containers and purple and these holographic containers. And I did not know that they had perfumes. So I think about a year ago I got this. And I love the Gaia Silk, which is what this is, the Gaia Silk Candle. It is one of my favorites. So I got the perfume. I'm like, sure. And now listen, I smell like a big, I mean, to me, I feel like I smell like a candle when I use this because it's like literally, um... It's the scent of, like, my, my favorite candle that they make. It's spicy. I think it smells very, like, Christmassy. It smells like eggnog. I know that sounds so disgusting. I don't know what that is. Nutmeg, a little cinnamony, um, a hint of, like, a... I just spray this on because I can't... I don't know if I'm smelling that. It smells like eggnog. Why does it smell like straight eggnog? I'm really trying to paint you guys a picture here. It's like... Carmex and eggnog. Um, smell it and tell me otherwise. And I know I'm like, this is great stuff. It does smell, I know that sounds gross. In a candle, I think that smells really good. I got this and I'm like, oh, I love it. And I just haven't worn it as much because when I spray it on, I just, I feel like I just smell like my favorite candle. Not that it's a bad scent, but it's just not always what I'd reach for. So I don't know. This is an interesting scent. Again, I'm not trying to bash it or say it's bad because I, I own it and I'm telling you, I, I like it, liked it enough to keep it. Carmex paint, nutmeg, smoke. Smoke. That's what it smells like. Smoky. Um, again, odd, okay? But good. So, you guys, I think I talked about all of these. But I like that I have, like, this core group of ones that I really know are good. You know, I would say these two. I can't. I just can't be without these. These are my two. The, um, the Delina Exclusif, which I will link to where you can get that because you can only get it one spot. 
and the um, the Baccarat Rouge 540, the one that's in this container. Um, they were recently having a sale, I believe, at Bergdorf's, and I ordered the big one because I'm about halfway through that one, and I know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to stop using that. Um, the House of Siage scents, like, I could have brought those in here, I guess, but most of those, like the ones that look like candy or even the Mickey Mouse and... Um, there's like a Wonder Woman one and different ones. They do perfumes so beautifully. They have like the jars with the Swarovski crystals, crystals, you know, they look like little cupcakes. Um, so hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this, all this perfume talk. I know it's so difficult. You can't smell it, you know, through the thing, but yet people love perfume videos. It's one of my most requested ones over the years. So anyways, you guys, happy shopping. Like I said, it is fun to buy perfumes. And um, just a way to like express yourself with like zero effort, right? And I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. So definitely I will, um, my gosh, I'm going to link to all these. I'll link to the ones that I can or the ones that I think that are really worth it. And um, I just hope that you guys enjoyed it. So I will talk to you guys soon. And again, if you want more, um, oh my gosh, more of these combos. Brad, I mean, our podcast is like where the juice is, like where we really get deep on stuff. <laughs> relationships just so many like relationship dynamics and even the one that we did about Vanderpump Rules was like heavy on like cheating dynamics personal stories that we have um we talked about sibling rivalry like you know jealousy in families you know talking about things with in friends um and kind of how to avoid that foolery and how to live without that kind of stuff but then also just like cracking different like codes and figuring that whole dynamic out because I think I think we have not to brag but I think we have um but that was just like in this last episode and again like so many other personal things but I do think that um a lot of you guys are over there and we have so much fun it's like such a cool like private community that we have and we share like everything there but if you guys are interested in any of that or you want more personal things or you love a good like juicy Q&A or hearing about like someone's real like personal juice that's where we share all that so and I say that not to promote it but just to let you guys know that like you know I'm not someone that comes on here and like spills my guts about everything or gets too personal like I have done really personal things in the past but if you're you know we keep it like light and fluffy and fun here um but if you're wanting more of that and you're here and you enjoy like what I talk about and stuff I think you'd find that just on a totally different level of interesting and um, it's really really fun and we're having the best time over there and we just love all of you guys that hang out with us every week there so anyways I think now we have like 90 episodes or something they're all ad free if you join you can listen to all of those and we post a new one every week so anyways you guys I love you thank you for watching oh my gosh now I gotta put all this perfume away I think I'm just gonna like walk away and leave it because I can't I can't handle it talk to you guys later love you bye bye